Hello again guys, how is it going? It is Fico coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra Champion uh, reveal. I kind of tend to skip some, jump in when I can. LeBlanc was revealed quite late for a lot of viewers, but for me, at a pretty reasonable time. So LeBlanc, let's get it. The best lies are beautiful. So I've already seen this, but for the sake of watching Let's it together, go. I'm going to watch People it. To so LeBlanc is a 3 mana 5-2 stat line. It's kind of cool, isn't it? 3 mana 5-2, very aggressive stat line. So she's going to fit into a lot of aggressive strategies. Immediately already thinking about that. Unlike Siva, who I didn't get a chance to reveal, uh, she needs to see you deal 15 plus damage. So she needs to be on the field and have you deal 15 damage to get the flip. It's actually kind of difficult because the Blanc's already quite squishy and that flip condition kind of needs her to stay onto the field. So it's not easy, but if you build a strategy around it, I'm sure it can be done. This bloody business card's not too bad either. It's not too bad. It's most similar to Considered Strike, right? But it, it's a very, it, it fits into a very specific deck and it makes sense for it to be obviously in Noxus. So her level 2 by the way, a 6-3, man, 3 mana 6-3 sounds crazy. But obviously she, like, she won't flip that early in the game. Sometimes she might, depending on the card situations. Each time I see you deal 15 plus damage, create a mirror image in hand. I, it feels like... Immediately, I already think like at this point, it feels like overkill. Like if you're dealing 15 plus damage and it's happening that many times, you're generating like, I, I think this only happens a couple of times. I see LeBlanc in certain points of the game, maybe around the five mana plus points in the game where she maybe sometimes flips and then you get that one mirror image. I would have to assume by that point, the game's very close to over because like, just imagining LeBlanc getting constant value, like, it's not going to happen very on often, let alone LeBlanc actually flipping, unless you went out of your way to build a deck that would, say, all-in LeBlanc to protect her by using maybe Splashing Targon for some of those uh, Sunblessed Vigors and Bastions, but, yeah, I don't see, even if LeBlanc does flip, like, I think all this text here is kind of irrelevant. Very odd. Obviously, it's very powerful, but yes, a game should be ending if LeBlanc ever flips, right? Unchecked. This Black Rose Spy is a th uh, two mana three two with a reputation. When I'm summoned, transform me into an exact copy of a strongest ally that struck this round. So for this to be its most effective, um, it would obviously be hitting a very big ally to getting maximum value. But a lot of the times you'll need to actually attack or strike an enemy. So therefore you might have to open attack or not open, but attack the enemy obviously to play this. But other ways of kind of maneuvering around this is using strike cards. So anything like single combat, etc., or that new one that was revealed uh, to essentially get it before the attack. Uh, very snowball card can be played for tempo. I think if you haven't got the reputation ability or, or you haven't struck at all, I would imagine it just comes down as a two mana three two. Of a road. Card seems like it has high potential. It is an epic though. It is an epic. Right where I want you. The sigil of Malice. Eh? This mirror image card does seem kind of crazy. Just, just as a general card. I think this is uh, is this LeBlanc's. I don't know if that's LeBlanc's signature spell, is it? Maybe it is. I think it is. Summon an exact ephemeral copy of an ally with 5 plus power. That just seems crazy to me. It's like taken, like let alone just LeBlanc decks with the whole 5 plus units. This in general, like this can be splashed into a lot of regions for some powerful combos. Only 2 mana. Obviously it's slow. There's plenty of interaction there, but just... Doesn't have to, like, just put it on a Trindamere, you know? Like, holy shit, that's value. And you play a Trindamere with two mana backed up and you play Mirror Image. Obviously, it's a funny region to think about, like, free old Noxus. It does exist, Sejuani, Overwhelm. But this card seems nuts. Smoking.
Especially if Trinomia hasn't already flipped. You get some tremendous yeah. value from that. Because then you, like, if, if Trinomia hasn't flipped right, you swing with the ephemeral copy first. So that way it dies and it buffs the other one, but then you still maintain two Trindomirs. Because I think if you attack the other way, where you use the non-ephemeral one to attack first, your other Trindomir, I'm not sure if it flips instantly on the stack. Because it's, it's pretty funny how Trindomir works, but I think the other Trindomir would flip, turn to a level two, and then it would die. So interesting to think about. So I don't think there could be like level one and level two champions in the field. Pretty sure Trinomia will flip. I like LeBlanc. I like that stat line. I want her to be I want her to be effective because I think she's really amazing. So that was a LeBlanc video. There's been a few other cards revealed during the seasonal tournament, so we'll go ahead and talk about them in some amount of detail. But there you have it, LeBlanc. I think I'm going to experiment with her. I want her to be powerful. Already she's pretty much committed to like an aggressive strategy but we can come back to leblanc in a minute because there's a few other new cards to talk about so part of my beg my pardons so leblanc's signature spell is actually the sigil of malice and we'll go across to the one here so with the reputation i cost one deal two to anything one mana deal two uh at some point in the game you'll have the reputation unlocked and i think it's a realistic realistic uh card i don't know if you main deck this but having multiple copies of leblanc Seems like a reasonable card because it doesn't do anything in the early game. And then when the reputation is relevant, like which is like kind of going towards the four or five minute turns in the game, sometimes earlier, sometimes, it ends up still just being a fast speed deal two to anything. So unironically, like you want these kind of cards to be cheap and flexible in the early game where Sigil of Malice isn't really that kind of card. So this will only be like double LeBlanc kind of cheeses. I don't know if I'll be main decking this unless there's some sort of like other reputation cards that come out that really boost, but like that doesn't really make much sense because you have to be dealing damage to get the reputation up. So Sigil of Malice seems like an okay card only as a signature spell. However, Whispered Woods, this card right here, I am a big fan of because Noxus is lacking like within its own region, powerful card draw outside of Trefer and Assessor. Where Whispered Woods now seems like a very fantastic card, uh, most similar to, I've forgotten the name, Deep Meditation, right? Where you can reduce the cost of it and get some cheap card draw, but this is not limited to only spells. And a lot of the time, like this, this makes a lot more sense than the other card, right? Because Sigil of Malice, like, you want this card to be cheaper all the time. Whispered Woods is okay because, like, you'll be wanting to refill and draw cards later in the game anyway. So a lot of the time you probably won't need to be playing Whispered Woods immediately. Uh, Reputation will happen. This will be a two mana draw too. This seems like a fantastic card and I can see Noxus splashing this in many, many different decks and like giving Noxus card draw now might be scary because that, that, like, that region has typically been like limited in its kind of like refill mechanic. So Whispered Woods is a huge boost to the region and we might be able to start seeing some slower controller strategies within Noxus, play some Whispered Woods. This is a three of our many different decks. Uh, Mimic is a three mana burst speed spell with a reputation, costs one. Pick a spell in play or in hand and create a fleeting copy of it in hand. Uh, very similar to Spell Thief, right? Lots of similar mechanics here. However, you can pick a one of your own spells as well, so that makes it kind of powerful. Again, another card that you would like to be a bit more flexible throughout the early game, but oftentimes, like, it's not as relevant as a deal too, so Mimic seems like a decent card in terms of carrying the reputation. I think it's pretty good, right? I mean, Spell Thief seems really good. This card is just even better, and at some point in the game, it, the reputation will be unlocked. So I, I really like Mimic. I'm not sure what decks want to play it though. Like you might want to play it in your aggressive decks, but as I said, alongside the uh, Whispered Woods, there might be some slower strategies that start to exist within Noxus. Uh, maybe just not including LeBlanc, obviously. It's a completely different topic. Slower strategies in Noxus might consider Mimic. Maybe we'll see like a Noxus Targon deck of some kind or Shurima. Uh, Bloody Business. So this is a 4 mana fast speed spell we saw this in the video. An ally with 5 plus power strikes. And I mean, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, it's going to fit into your Blanc decks for sure. 
it's essentially like depending on what regions you're going to splash because you could also play concerted strike for one more mana which seems very good alongside leblanc's keyword because she needs to see you deal damage so i mean if you're splashing demacia you probably just play concerted strike over this card 99 percent of the time however if you need this kind of mechanic within Noxus's own region. It now exists, but limited to five plus power units. Uh, yeah, the, the, the concert strike seems a lot better than this. So, and I, I think the LeBlanc deck might be splashing. The Marcia is one choice. The other one is Targon. So yeah, this might see some play at first, but might ultimately just kind of not get played long after. So we have the Thorn of Rose here. This is a three mana five one. When I'm summoned, create a Gilly in hand. I mean, if there was ever a deck that wanted to play Gilly, I think that deck now considers just playing Thorn of Rose. It strictly just seems like a better value engine. And a lot of the time, Gilly wasn't getting that early game value. So Thorn of Rose makes a lot of sense for any deck that was playing Gilly to now consider this instead. However, what decks are playing Gilly? I don't know. The five one stat line might be more relevant and the Gilly might be a good bonus. This makes some sense in your kind of 5 plus attack deck, which runs a Trafurian Assessor, LeBlanc probably, and some combat tricks. Yeah, I just want to double back here for a sec, because I'm starting to realize that Freehold might be another good region to splash alongside LeBlanc for an aggressive strategy. We've already seen Noxus Freehold do quite well together. You have Troll Chain, etc. So Bloody Business might actually see some play if that combination becomes existing because they don't really have much combat tricks in terms of striking so bloody business might see play in a deck like that Asha Jawani maybe uh, mirror image as well was the final card we were able to see I think mirror image seems like a really cool card and is probably going to see some decent play I reckon I think this is going to see some decent play a lot of decks can splash this even like aggressive decks, oh, not specifically like super aggressive decks, but any like mid-range deck to late game deck, like Overwhelm decks will love this card. Uh, like you play a Darius, dude. Oh, amazing, amazing. I think that wraps it up. I think there'll be some more cards being revealed in a few hours, but what do you guys think? Congratulations to our seasonal tournament winners. I just saw Marjong, Marjing Bay win the Americas, so big props to him. And yeah, this is a uh, love LeBlanc. Take care, guys.